John Ridley and Juan Cabal pit the Black Panther against an unknown threat as T'Challa's secret agents embedded all around the world are exposed and the hero must go against his own nation and even the Avengers to help save them. John Ridley uses this first issue of his new series to shake up the status quo of the Black Panther, shifting focus from the interstellar galaxy-spanning empire Ta-Nehisi Coates set up in his run and bringing things back down to Earth with a more grounded spy political thriller series, riding off the back of Coates' to set up T'Challa's drive to want to return to something a bit more simpler and escape all of the red tape of taking a nation public and having to hand most of his power over to a parliament. I really enjoyed Ridley exploring this awkward situation T'Challa finds himself in with not only his contingencies coming back to bite him in the ass but also being split between so many different things like Wakanda and being there for his people while also being an Avenger and being the chairperson of the Avengers and the leader of an intergalactic empire. I like how it all sort of comes to an edge with this sort of all blowing up in his face and him having to sort of scramble to make sure no one finds out about his secret spies because if someone did then people would see that as an act of war from Wakanda and he's just trying to stop this international incident from happening. Juan Cabal does a lot of beautiful work throughout this issue with their style really filled with some great action thriller moments and it's fitting to help build out this more grounded spy centric storyline. I like how a lot of the action was sort of characters running from people shooting at them and you know people's heads being blown off in quite brutal fashion and all that sort of stuff that you'd see in a spy thriller like the Jason Bourne series. Black Panther issue 1 was a great reshift of the status quo for T'Challa and his people, turning from spacefaring nations to more grounded spy thriller storylines that looks to test T'Challa in some really interesting ways. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Black Panther issue 1 finds Black Panther leading the Avengers against some monsters in Iceland. Panther asks Doctor Strange if he can contain this so the hero forms a barrier around the battle area, letting Thor, Captain America and Panther see if they can settle these people down. Thor unleashes his lightning on the beasts but it barely does anything to them as Strange wonders if anyone has any ideas so T'Challa wants to find a portal they came through since there's always a portal or a hive mind or a master destruct switch. With no portal in sight T'Challa asks if Stephen can make one but Strange knows that he can only expend so much energy so he would need to bring down the wall in order to make the portal. T'Challa wonders about a partially operational rift so Stephen gets to work as Cap readies his shield for Thor who hits it with his hammer creating a shockwave which blows the monsters back into Strange's portal. The hero closes it trapping the monsters elsewhere. Cap wonders why they came there in the first place and Thor thinks that they just wanted nothing except for the hunger of battle but T'Challa doesn't want to assume that as Strange finds a sample of something on the ground, wanting to take it back to Avengers Mountain for analysis. T'Challa wants him ready for when these things come back, so Strange heads back to make his tests and Thor leaves as well. Steve thanks T'Challa for helping them find a solution to that battle, hoping he is back to running the Avengers and not running around in space, but T'Challa knows that he is the Emperor of the Intergalactic Wakandan Empire, and he plans on running things from Earth and his role of King of Wakanda is shifting, so he actually might be around a bit too much now. Steve hopes so since while they all have responsibilities, a leader needs to lead and that's hard to do when one eye is on the problem and the other is in the middle of the universe. T'Challa promises that he will continue serving as chairperson to the Avengers, shaking his friend's hand as Steve realises that they should probably call a Quinjet to pick them up. Back in Wakanda, the nation's parliament is in session, going over the myriad of things needed to keep the nation running. They ask T'Challa for his opinion so he tries to tell them his directives but the Prime Minister reminds him that he is no longer their ruler so they don't need his direct directive, only perspective. T'Challa thinks that they need to return the matter to committee and convene a panel to discuss this further at a later date, and Falasade thinks he's making a joke on their behalf, but T'Challa knows that it wasn't his intent, but their deliberations are amusing. The Prime Minister reminds him to show some respect since this is his people's business, but T'Challa reminds her a king's business is to get things done, and seeing so little is being accomplished there, he will leave the people to their discussions. As T'Challa leaves, Achille joins him, but T'Challa T'Challa doesn't want one of his lectures on decorum. Achille merely wants to talk about what he thinks diplomacy is, reminding T'Challa that democracy is a process, but T'Challa thinks that digging a ditch is as well and debating action is no substitute for shoveling. He reveals that his new parliamentary government gives him pause since ceding authority has been harder than he thought, since he's protector and it's who he is. Achille understands the pause since he couldn't lead Hatat Zarez if he didn't appreciate the obligation of being the sword and shield 
shield of the people. Akeli thinks that T'Challa merely needs to adjust his methods and the people need to assume their freedom while being looked after by a loving but firm adult who knows what's best. T'Challa is amazed his friend lyrically expressed what he was thinking, so Achille tells him to be that firm adult, even if he must do it from the shadows, since the truth is they all have their secrets. In Chile, Wakandan agents Jahai and Omolola meet for drinks, but Omolola feels that they are cheating doing this. Jahai knows that he loves the woman and doesn't feel that way, but the woman knows that they are both being unfaithful to their other halves right now. The two decide to head back to their apartment when suddenly the waiter's head is blown off. More people around them are killed as the two run into the streets from the active shooter, heading to Jahai's car. The man notices a bomb on the undercarriage, but it's too late as he jumps on Omolola as the bomb goes off. Jahai is injured by the blast, but Omolola manages to grab him and take him into a nearby building. Jahai knows that, that someone is after them as they find they have been boxed in. The two activate their beads, donning their armor and telling the hooded being in front of them that they will fight to the end. The being is glad since they live to die as ninjas attack the Wakandans, but they manage to beat them back as Jahai is slashed across the back. He tells Omolola to run and tell T'Challa that they know as he grabs one of the ninja's bombs, setting it off and killing himself and the ninjas. In Wakanda, T'Challa's peaceful night is interrupted by a message from Omolola, who he reminds was never meant to contact him. She tells him that Jahai is dead, so the hero demands to know her location. T'Challa races to see the woman, not wanting her to talk, only wanting to see the body of Jahai, his old friend. The two head to a Balboa funeral home, where Jahai's body was brought in as a John Doe. Bribing their way in, T'Challa looks over the body, telling Omolola he needs to pay the man in the funeral home to bury Jahai since he needs a moment. T'Challa runs into the alleyway, losing his composure as later he tells Omolola to tell him everything. She tells him that Jahai and her were in love, but they were committed to the mission. T'Challa knows that they won't even have any contact with one another, but the woman says that they were attacked by a coordinated professional and they would have been killed had Jahai not killed them first. She knows Jahai said T'Challa would know who they are as Omolola wonders why every time she was with Jahai it felt wrong. And T'Challa says that it was because she was disobeying her orders, but Omolola thinks that it was because she was being unfaithful to the cause and to T'Challa. She knows that he loved Jahai like a brother, but it was still love and she was between that love. T'Challa gives her a phone, telling her to follow the instructions on it and it will get her to a safe house, not wanting her to speak to anyone or him again. She asks where he's going, learning that he's heading back to Wakanda so he can retrieve the other agents since they too will be in trouble and he must help them while he still has time. Later at Shuri lab, T'Challa tells his sister in private that Jahai is dead, but Shuri thinks that he died years ago in a boating accident, but T'Challa knows he didn't, saying that he agreed to open Wakanda to the world, but he never trusted the world to accept it. Knowing democracies are lionized, but they are dangerous, and stable nations require only one leader. Shuri thinks he means dictators, but T'Challa knows that dictators don't pretend to be anything more than what they are, while democracies pretend to be free and fair when they aren't, and he couldn't take that chance so even while he claimed to integrate Wakanda into the world, he made plans to protect it, embedding sleeper agents all over the world to be normal people. But if Wakanda was ever threatened, he could order them to engage in guerrilla campaigns of infiltration and assassination against anyone who would hurt Wakanda. T'Challa says that Jahai was one of these agents who he faked the death of only to have him reborn as one of Wakanda's protectors. Shuri learns that there are 10 agents, upset that they are all just waiting out there to assassinate someone. T'Challa says he thought he was securing Wakanda, but Shuri thinks that it was just paranoia. T'Challa knows that it's actually called leadership, since a leader protects their people, but Shuri asks what happened and why Jahai was killed. T'Challa reveals that the program was secret and no one knew and anyone who found out would see the agents as a threat, but he doesn't know if they would ever come for him, unsure of the trust they have for him at the moment. Shuri knows that he never has not been low on trust thanks to all of the clandestine things he's been up to, so T'Challa asks her for her help, giving her data on the attack on Jahai, wanting her to comb through it for any clues of who is behind this attack. He warns her though that no one else can know about this, wanting her to help him buy enough time to save the lives of the other agents and fix this. Shuri reminds him that to fix lies, it usually begins by telling the truth, but she'll still get to 
work on bringing their people home. T'Challa contacts Captain America, telling him that he'll have to take some leave from the Avengers for a while. Steve reminds him of their recent conversation regarding T'Challa's attention, but T'Challa reminds him that circumstances change. Steve knows that responsibilities don't stop, and he's a king, so he should understand that. T'Challa knows that he understands more than Captain America, and he wouldn't take this leave if it wasn't putting others first, hoping his friend trusts that. Steve knows that he has their trust, but wishes that they had more of his commitment. Cap signs off as later at the international airport at Moscow, Omolola makes her way off a plane and into the city, where she is caught by a man, revealed to be T'Challa. T'Challa wonders what she's doing there following him, learning that she followed him to help with the other agents. T'Challa thinks that she is a real problem following orders, but she refuses to sit back and wait, knowing T'Challa has no idea what he's up against, and she's earned the right to help T'Challa find the person who killed Jahai and cut his head off. T'Challa tells her not to disobey any more of his orders and the woman agrees, hoping he knows what he's getting into and is ready for what is next. T'Challa knows more than anything of what he's up against and he is ready since he lives for this. Since he lives.